Hey everyone, in this video we're going to learn to solve linear differential equations. So I've written something here, and this is an example of a linear first order differential equation. This is what's known as the standard form. So if it looks like this, or if you can write it like this, it's a linear differential equation. And the order is one. The order is the highest order of the derivative. So this is the first derivative, so we say it's order one. So let me give you the steps, like step one, step two, step three, uh, that are needed to solve one of these differential equations. And then we'll go through uh, a simple example, so steps. So step one is to write it in standard form. So you want to write in standard form. So write in standard form. The steps are really important. You know, a lot of people frown uh, on step-by-step -step processes, but this is one of those things where it's really important to just follow the steps. So maybe your differential equation looks like this. x squared, say, dy dx plus y equals e to the x. So this is not quite in standard form, right? You have the presence of this x squared. So you would start by dividing everything by x squared, and then that would essentially put the differential equation in standard form. So step one, write in standard form. Step two, you want to compute something. So compute, and this is called the integrating factor. So compute the integrating factor. And this is going to be a very mysterious looking quantity. So um, in this video, I'm not going to explain where it comes from. Uh, let me just say that it's created in a way that forces this method to work. So maybe I'll make another video later explaining the derivation. But um, the point is that it does work. And we'll verify that it works. That's the nice thing about the solution process. So compute what's called the integrating factor. That funny symbol that I wrote here, that's mu. It looks like an M. It looks like a U, hence the name mu. So it's a Greek letter. When it's typed, it looks like this. I tend to do this, mu, mu, mu. Just keep practicing it until you get it, mu. So mu of x, that's the integrating factor. Step three, multiply your differential equation by the integrating factor. So multiply by mu of x, OK? And then step four, here's where I'm going to quit and just give you an example. Uh, finish. So I'm going to show you the trick. I'm going to show you how to finish. And the beautiful thing is, um, when you see a problem done, you'll kind of understand, like, oh, OK, that, that's, what, that's how it works. So it, it's pretty interesting. It's a pretty amazing technique. So let's do a simple example. So example. Let's start with, uh, I think this one's easy. I have not done it yet. So, so dy dx looks pretty simple. Uh, minus y equals e to the 3x, equals e to the 3x. So this is a linear differential equation, right? It fits the form. Um, recall the form was dy dx plus big P of x times y equals f of x. So you see the form here matches what we have. Uh, big P of x is actually negative 1 in this problem. So big P of x is equal to negative 1. So solution. Let's go through the steps carefully. So the first step is to write in standard form. Well, it's already been done, right? We have a 1 here, right? There's a 1 here. We have the P of x. It's clear. So step 1 has been accomplished. So step 1 is done. So check. Step 2, compute the integrating factor mu of x. OK, so let's do that. So we established that big P was negative 1. So mu of x is going to be e to the integral of negative 1 dx. Okay, Now you integrate here. When you integrate negative 1, you just get negative x. Don't worry about the constant of integration. You don't need it. Okay, um, Think about it this way. We're going to multiply by mu of x in the next step. So if you add a constant of integration, what's going to happen is that you would get this, right? because you can the, the addition turns into multiplication, right? Because it's the bases are the same. Then you just end up dividing by e by e to the c, so it doesn't really matter. So you don't you don't need it. So you just generally don't write it. All right. So let me reiterate what we have. That's mu of x, 
and that's equal to e to the negative x. That's not the answer, but I'm going to put it in a box because that, my friends, is an accomplishment. So we've made some progress. Step three is to multiply by mu of x. Okay, so let's carefully do that. By the way, when I say multiply by mu of x, I mean multiply the differential equation in standard form, right? Like, so if you did some simplification, work with this one, work with the simplified one. All right, so we have e to the negative x. Oh, this is so cool. dy dx, wait till you see this. Uh, minus e to the negative x times y equals, and then e to the negative x times e to the 3x. Well, what happens is you add the exponents, right? So you end up with negative x plus 3x, so you get e to the 2x, okay? All right, so we've done step three, and let's see uh, what step four is. Finish, not very enlightening. Okay, so this is probably the most important part, um, and I didn't explain it in the steps. That's okay, because I'm going to explain it now. So this piece right here is always going to be d dx. I guess if there's a theta here, it's d d theta, or if there's a t here, it's d d t. So the derivative, so d dx, of, and it's always going to be the function you're solving for. So in this case, we're looking for y, right? That's the solution to the differential equation. So y times your integrating factor. So our integrating factor is right here. So e to the negative x. And the right-hand side is the same. So it's always this. This is, this is always, so always like this, okay? It's always d dx times your function times mu of x. Always, no matter what, right? And the beautiful thing is you can check your answer. Um, remember the product rule for mathematics? The product rule says if you have f times g and you take the derivative, it's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. We can check our work here. So the derivative of the first is the derivative of y. That's dy dx. There it is. Check. Times the second. That's e to the negative x. Check. Plus the first, which is y. Check. Times the derivative of e to the negative x. Well, that's just going to be e to the negative x times the derivative of negative x, right? Chain rule. The derivative of negative x is negative 1, and that's why we end up with negative e to the negative x. One more time, the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second, and that involves the chain rule, and that's why you get the negative one. This will always work, so it's always d dx, your unknown function, times mu of x. So the way um, that this is done, like if you're curious, why does this happen? It's forced. Uh, the derivation basically starts off by like, uh, you start with some unknown function mu, and you force this to happen, okay? Uh, and then, so therefore, that, that's why it works. Um, now we just integrate both sides. Now, word of caution, uh, don't put the integration symbol, because if you do, then you have to squeeze in the dx over here, and there's no room, so it's likely you'll forget it. So just, just write integrate. So never put the integration symbol on the left-hand side. Just drop the ddx. When you integrate a derivative, the derivative goes away, right? So we end up with y e to the negative x equals, and I'll go ahead and put the integral sign here, e to the 2x dx. All right, to integrate e to the 2x, we just divide by 2, right? Um, so this is e to the 2x, and then you just divide by 2. That always works. And then you just have your constant of integration, capital C. Let's finish this. Uh, we could solve for y by dividing by e to the negative x. It might be easier just to multiply everything by e to the negative x. So let me write it again. This is 1 half e to the 2x plus c. This is an acceptable solution. It's an uh, implicit solution. If we want an explicit solution, that means we have to solve for y. So multiplying by e to the x, multiplying by e to the x, these cancel, right? Because you add the exponents, you get e to the 0. So you get y equals 1 half e to the 2x times e to the x. Well, again, you add the exponents. 2x plus x is 3x. Then we have plus c e to the x. And that is the final answer. So that's how you solve uh, a linear differential equation. I hope this video has been helpful. That's it.